the first exclusive 50-plus golf instructional video. Hundreds of thousands of seniors play golf each day, and thousands of them have attended Jay Overton's famous Golf Institute at Innisbrook in Florida. Jay's superb instruction is now yours to help make you a better golfer. And now, here is Jay Overton himself, Vice President of Golf at Innisbrook Resort in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Welcome. Senior golf instruction is a project we've been thinking about for a long time. At Innisbrook, we teach thousands of people a year to improve their golf games. And among those thousands are seniors who attend our golf school that require special attention. It's through this experience that we've been able to focus on the fundamentals that really help senior golfers. When the producers of this video approached us, we were delighted to have an opportunity to take part in this special project. Golf is a game for all ages and should be fun and simple. With proper mental preparation, practice, and understanding our limitations, we'll continue to improve our golf game. Remember, you're not getting older, you're getting better. And with the aid of this video, your game can continue to improve. Now let's join the Ennisbrook Golf Senior Institute in progress and let's review the fundamentals of senior golf. Our program will begin with the fundamentals of a sound golf swing, with special emphasis on how the senior golfer can best adapt his or her own swing to play for peak results. We'll begin by looking at what makes the ball go straight. Then Jay will describe the direction swing with pre-swing thoughts and in-swing guidelines. We'll see how to apply these fundamentals to the skill strokes, putting, chipping, pitching, and bunker play, and cover some useful practice hints. Then we'll move on to the distance swing, again with pre-swing and in-swing guidelines, and how the senior golfer can apply these lessons to maximize performance from the fairway and off of the tee. Got a good-looking group of seniors with us today to uh, work with the fundamentals. And uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to Lou Smither. Lou? Lou, who's our director of instruction at Ennisbrook and heads our Ennisbrook Goth Institute. Lou's going to be working with you online today. Uh, I'll work with you on the fundamentals, and then at our first opportunity, we'll break, and, and Lou will give you some drills and take you through the paces. So, Lou, say hello to everyone for us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now, the things that we want to get started on this morning are number one, always remember that this game is played to have fun. You just, you, you can't do otherwise. If you take it too serious, we're just not going to enjoy ourselves and we're going to put ourselves in an uncomfortable position. Number two, we want you to feel comfortable because the swing that you have will work and our jobs are to make that swing work for you. Number three, we have to understand that what we're, in, what we're teaching you today is a method of practice. It's a method of taking your golf swing and making it repetitious. So all the fundamentals we'll discuss and all the online drills that we'll do today are to enhance your golf swing. Okay, the fourth thing that we want to talk about today is that no two swings are alike and so the teaching and learning process is really a culmination of what Lou and I have studied and we've studied and observed good players. But we know one thing, there is no one way to hit a golf ball. So as we work today, feel very comfortable in the use of your own golf swing. Okay? If there are not any questions, we'll get started right with the fundamentals. Okay? First thing that we want to talk about, and I think the easiest way to make the game fun is to let's make the ball go straight. And we have to talk about what makes that ball go straight. I know there's no fun in this game if we are looking for golf balls or we're losing golf balls all the time. So let's try to figure out what makes the ball go straight. Anybody got any ideas? Uh, by having the club face straight when you hit the ball. Okay, Doug, that's a good point. He says by having the club face straight when the ball is hit by the club. So let's expand on that. Why don't I back up here and, and let's talk about the, the whole perspective of what makes the ball go straight. Number one, and let's deal with that club head position. We know that we have to have the club in a perpendicular position to our target at impact if the club face is either opened or if it's closed, it's going to put a spin on the ball, either clockwise or counterclockwise, and we'll end up getting what we know as a draw or a slice. But even more importantly than that, the first thing that we have to do, 
we have to identify a target and make our motion directly to that target. And that's maybe the first thing that we want to talk about this morning. I think for the senior golfer, that's absolutely the most important. Because I think that as we begin to lose confidence, maybe some of our former skills, muscle deteriorate just slightly. I think what ends up happening, we begin to think about trying to make contact with the golf ball and we actually forget about our number one objective and that's to make the ball go towards the target. And Bob, if you'd help me with this, if you would just stand please, okay? I just want you to make the ball come right towards me. One more time. And have a seat, thank you. The thing that we'll notice first about what Bob just did, number one, there wasn't anything uh, unnatural, there wasn't anything contrived, there was no physical effort to push the ball, there was no shoving. Uh, it was natural, there was a nice arm swing, but more importantly, which direction was his arm swinging? It was swinging in the direction that he wanted the ball to go, and that was right to me, because I'm a very defined target. Now, I think for the senior player, if we can identify our target and think more in terms of our arms swinging away from and directly back towards that target, then we're going to immediately establish a better ball flight pattern. Okay, let's discuss what makes the ball go straight because that's the way we're going to have the most fun in this game. And we honestly believe that the two key elements here in making the ball go straight for any golfer, but from a, a concentration and a confidence standpoint, particularly the senior golfer, let's uh, focus on the path and the club face position during the golf swing. We know that if the path goes to the right, then we know we're going to make the ball go to the right. And try to envision just throwing the ball. If you're going to throw the ball out to the right, that's where your arm's going to go. Or to the left, that's where your arm's going to go. But our path creates the initial position of the ball. So we want to make the path of our swing go straight to our target. Now, if we can couple that with club face position, then what we can create, and I'll do this very slow, what we can create then is a situation where our arms and our club face are going in the same direction when our club meets the ball. And that's what's going to help us have a little more fun with this game. Any deviation of that, and we're going to have to go look for the golf ball. Now, the big thing here is let's be able to identify the ball flight laws because there are nine combinations of path and club face. We can have our path go in one of three directions, straight, right, or left, or we could have our club face go right, straight, or left. And three times three, as we all know, is nine. So we would have situations, and we can see by the arrows on the ground and these three balls, we could have situations where our path and our club face combinations create a ball that starts to the left and draws, a ball that starts to the left and goes straight, a ball that starts to the left and curves to the right. The same scenario can happen as we make our path go straight or as we make our path go to the right. So it's very important that we can look up after making contact with a golf ball and see what our ball is doing because if we see that ball starting to the right and then curving to the right, we know that during our golf swing, our arms went right and our club face went right. So understanding the fundamentals of the ball flight law are going to help you have a lot more fun because we're going to hit it a lot straighter. And remember, two key elements, the path and the position of the club face during the swing. Now that we've established what makes the ball go straight, Let's identify that swing and those fundamentals as our direction swing. And where we want to go now to help the senior golfer is to break the direction swing down into pre-swing and in-swing thoughts. And to help us with our pre-swing, I'm going to ask Lou to come back in and join us and go over some fundamentals. Lou, if you will. What we have established is what we call the H pattern. And as our senior institute remembers, we talked about how important the uh, establishment of practice habits is going to be. Now, in this particular pattern, we're going to call your attention to three different elements of the pre-swing, posture, grip, and alignment. And first, we're going to start with the grip. OK, one of the things that we want to try to do is uncomplicate the grip for our seniors. 
Now, we know there are many different types of grip and lou. I'll get you to demonstrate those. Let's look first at the overlapping grip or the Varden grip. That's the most common used. Then we have the interlocking grip. And that would be for a player with very small and possibly weak hands. And then we have the 10 fingered grip, which we see some of our senior players go to just to establish a little more feel because they've got all 10 fingers on the golf club. Okay, let's put the club back down. And when we were talking about what makes the ball go straight, we know we want to try to establish a square club face position. Now, in order to do that, Lou has positioned his hands where his palms are facing each other by putting his thumbs directly down the shaft. Now, we find most senior, senior players, as they begin to lose a little strength, could uh, have a little advantage if they do this one simple little thing. Lou, if you'll strengthen your grip, we're going to move our left hand over just slightly and our right hand under so that the V's of both hands are pointing a little bit more to his right shoulder. Now, we call that a strong grip. That will help you make the ball go just a little bit further, and we don't think it's going to hinder the ball going straighter. Now, one of the most important things that the seniors have to understand is that as we lose confidence and a little bit of our feel and sensitivity, it's absolutely imperative that we position the club deep in our fingers. And Lou, if you'll open your hands, we'll see the club is down in the fingers of the hand. It's not up in the palms of either hand, but, but deep in the fingers. Now this helps two things. Number one, it gets the club down into the fingertips where we have the most sensitivity and the most feel, and it's gonna promote a more relaxed, tension-free grip. The next time you're on the practice range, try strengthening your grip as you work with Jay's suggestions on posture, grip, and alignment. Posture really one of the pitfalls of our senior player. Now you see Lou, he, Lou is obviously a good player. One of the main things that he does is try to keep as much elevation and height during his setup over the golf ball. Most of the senior players that we work with, unfortunately, they begin to crouch down and bend too much in the center of their body instead of bending at the waist. If we can have, yeah, we're asking Lou to bend a little more at the waistline and stay as tall as he can with his chin up. This is going to enable you to have a more free arm swing through the ball, create a little more height and obviously a little more leverage for players of all ages, but particularly the seniors. Now the next thing is the alignment. As we look at the clubs on the ground, the outermost clubs are used to identify the path of the swing. So as we make our swing go to our target, it should go down the path of these clubs. The innermost club will help us align our body. Number one, we're putting our feet equal distance from this golf club, and then we're aligning our hips and our shoulders with our feet. That squares us in relationship to the target, so we can hit practice shots and not have to worry whether we are aligned properly or not. And then the last club is the club that identifies the golf ball position. We want to try to maintain a position, a constant position, as we go from club to club, and in setting the H pattern up for practice, we try to keep the ball in relationship to the left heel slightly inside. This puts it forward from of the middle of the golf swing, and we want to keep this very consistent throughout all our club selections. Okay, Jay, now that we've incorporated the H pattern into our practice routine, how are we going to take posture, grip, and alignment to the golf course? Well, we have a lot of seniors ask that question, Lou, and we suggest that we do it through a procedure we call pre-swing routine, and I'll be glad to demonstrate that. First thing that we want to do is to establish a position behind the golf ball prior to hitting it on the golf course, and this gives us an opportunity to do two things. Number one, to visualize the shot that we want to execute, but more importantly, it gives us time to review posture, grip, and alignment. It's at this point that I establish my grip. That would be number one. Number two, as I position myself in relationship to my target, I first put the club face down. That establishes the lines necessary to create a proper alignment, and then for me to get comfortable, which is my posture. At that point, we execute our golf swing. 
Now, if we can do that on a consistent basis, it promotes a lack of tension, it promotes a repetitious swing, something that we create on the practice tee, but becomes very difficult when we get to the golf course. Now that we've established the fundamentals during the pre-swing of the direction swing, let's talk a little bit about the in-swing principles. The two things that we like to key on and the things that seem to be most applicable to our senior uh, students, number one, we want to talk about tension. And then we're going to talk about target awareness. Let's first talk about tension. Two big keys in tension. Number one, our initial grip pressure. We see way too many of our seniors, basically because of an insecurity or a lack of confidence, just simply start with their hands too tight on the golf club or with a bad grip where they have to hold their hands real tight. And we alluded to this earlier. So let's get the club down in the fingers. Nice, light grip to start with. And the most important thing and the second thing is that as we swing the golf club back and forth, we maintain the same sense of lightness. The good players never really change grip pressure during the swing. When you do that, that's when you see the fat shots or the premature releases. Maintain the same grip pressure throughout the swing. Now, second thing that we want to talk about is target awareness. Most of us, unfortunately, think that this, the golf ball, is our target. That plays totally against what we try to do with the golf game. It is where we want the ball to end up is our real target. What we want to establish is that during the golf swing, during the actual golf swing, we want to focus on our target. We want to think about our path and our motion going to our target. And to help us demonstrate that, we've asked our highest handicapped senior today, Nancy, if you'll come on up. Nancy's a 27, been playing the game about four years. We're going to bring our coach back in here. And I'm going to take a little chance here. I'm so confident that we can and show you this, that I'm going to go out in front. I'm going to have Nancy actually chip and pitch a few balls to me. And with the help of the coach, maybe I'll be all right. Nancy, I'm well insured. How about you? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll take a chance. OK. OK, Nancy, I want you to step in here. And remember those pre-swing fundamentals that we learned about earlier, posture, grip, and alignment. We just want you to make some nice, light, easy swings, and now I want you to pay attention and focus on Jay, what he has to do with target. Okay, now Nance, now I want you to think about the target. I'm your target, and the big thing in the pre-swing, we want to let our motion, our arms being your motion, come directly to the target. Now, when you're ready, you let me know. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to move your target over here a little bit, okay? Throw your little curve. Now I want you to swing your arms directly at this target. Okay, one, two, three. That's pretty good. Okay, now, coach, get her set again. Let's go. We don't want to have. Now she's anticipating that I'm going to change the target, and she's right. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. Okay, we're going to establish your target as my left hand. Now you focus and concentrate, and let's see if we can get your mo motion to swing freely out to this target. Nice and easy. Good. Not too bad. Coach, let's try that one more time. There, everything's there right. Now, your direction was good, but your motion was a little short. You need a little more follow through, a little greater pace. OK, one more time. Nice and easy. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. Whoop, I'm going to change it. I want the ball to come right to me. Can we do that? Let your, let your arm swing right directly to your target. Perfect. That's a good job, Nancy. Okay, let's summarize what we've established in this first session. Number one, we've shown what makes the ball go where we want it to. And in conclusion, it is the relationship of our path to our target and the position of the club face as we make contact with the golf ball. Now, we call that our direction swing. And in our direction swing, we established two principles. We established in swing and pre-swing. In pre-swing, Lou helped us concentrate on posture, grip, and alignment. And in the in swing, we concentrate primarily 
on target awareness, but keep in mind that tension is one of the real pitfalls of senior golf. Let's take these fundamentals out to the practice green and begin with our first skill stroke, the putt. Okay, let's review our first skill stroke. And this skill stroke, we're going to identify as a one lever stroke, and we're going to apply it to both putting and chipping. Now, I've got Lou in here to show a couple of things because we're going to work on putting first. And in putting, we're going to deal with pre-swing and in-swing as we have before. And in the pre-swing, we want to, again, look at our posture, grip, and alignment. Our posture is such that we stand tall enough to let our arms hang freely. Our grip, we want to make sure that the club is stabilized up in the hand rather than down in the fingers. And our alignment, we want to square ourselves to the hole. So, Lou, go ahead and make one stroke. Okay. The second part of the end swing is the concept and the understanding that we're going to utilize a one lever stroke. By this, we try to unify the swinging arm motion in the hands. We don't want to let the hands work independently from the arms. That's one of the real senior pitfalls. Many of us, as we lose confidence in our putting stroke, it's not from ability. It's strictly a mental situation that we feel like that we have to help the ball. And once we lose our confidence, we see most of the seniors begin to use their hands in this type of fashion. So to firm up the stroke, we insist that in the pre-swing routine that we think about using a one lever stroke. Okay, one more shot here. Now in the end swing, we deal with the three P's and Lou will be working with our senior students to cover those. Okay, Nance, what we want you to do is step in here and I want you to work on the things we just got done talking about. And we've isolated it to two different things. First of all, pre-swing, which is posture, grip, and alignment. And then the in-swing principles of pressure, path, and pace. We've got these boards down here for you to work with. So I want you to step in here and go ahead and stroke a few putts for us and try to work with those things that we just talked about earlier. And I'll coach with you, working you right through it. Good. Back and through. Very good. And some of those things that we talked about earlier with pressure, path, and pace is to utilize a one lever stroking action. Knowing that we can do that best if we have a light grip pressure in our hands. And promoting a more accelerated motion through the ball rather than a decelerated motion. Notice how smooth that putter is working back and through. That tells me one thing, that you've got a nice light pressure in your hands and your arms are working very freely. Very good. Lou, let's discuss probably the most misunderstood shot in golf, and that's taking the one lever stroke from the putting green and applying it to chipping. We see so many of the seniors fall into the trap of picking a favorite club and then trying to manipulate uh, that club into a certain type of a shot. What this shot is, what chipping is, is a stroke. It's the one lever stroke, and we change our golf clubs as we change our position around the green to try to help us save shots. Now, let's look at the fundamentals, can we? Okay, Lou is approximately five feet off the green now, and his job with the putting stroke is to make sure that the ball spends minimal air time and maximum ground time. So we've, we've selected a six iron for this particular shot because we're going to try to land it just onto the green and let it roll the rest of the way to the pin. So Lou, if you'll go ahead and hit this, and then I'll cover the fundamentals. Now, you'll notice Lou's stroke is the same as the putting, so that is the one lever effort that we're looking for. Now, the next thing that he has done that is different from the putting, he has placed the ball further back in his stance. He's actually got it near his right foot, and he slightly opened his stance. His weight's forward so that his angle is slightly up and then down and through. That's a nice shot. Now, let's go back and change our club selection because, as you'll note, we're further away. We have to carry the ball up onto the green. For this, we need a little more of a lofted club. We had selected a six. Let's go to an eight iron 
and use the exact same stroke. Nicely done. One more time and then we'll work to the farthest spot. You notice how the one lever stroke is still utilized. Nice shot. Now we'll go back and since we have to carry the ball further, we'll choose now a more lofted club. But we maintain the same fundamentals. The ball back in our stance, weight forward, and a one lever stroke as we swing away from and back towards our target. That's great. If you, the senior golfer, can utilize this shot rather than taking one club, your favorite club, and trying to manipulate it around the greens, we'll save a lot more shots. Let's move on to our second skill shot, the two-lever motion for pitching and bunker play. Now that we've completed our one-lever skill shot, let's look at our second skill stroke. And that is the two-lever skill stroke, and we're going to use that and apply it to the green side pitch as well as the green side bunker. And I've asked Lou to come in and demonstrate this, but let me cover the fundamentals and the basics of the stroke before we do that. Regardless of whether it's grass or sand, there are four things that we're going to try to achieve during this stroke. Number one, we're going to let our club face open so that it conforms to this green line. We're going to position our body so that we've aligned our body and subsequently our swing with the white era. Those are the first two things. The third thing is we're going to ask Lou to push his weight slightly forward so that we can create a little sharper angle than we would otherwise have on a regular golf shot. And the fourth thing is, we have to recognize we're not going to try to hit the golf ball, but we're going to use either sand or grass to get the ball to go up in the air from the club face and onto the green. So we don't try to hit the ball. We look slightly behind the ball and then execute the shot. So Lou, if you will, go ahead and hit the first shot. Nice shot. Let's hit another one for him. Now this is a shot that many seniors have a problem with because they try to do things in particular such as lift the club up or help the ball up in the air. But we're going to ask you to use your natural golf swing and just conform to the four changes in the fundamentals. Open club face, open stance, weight slightly forward, and let's don't look at the ball and try to hit the ball. Let's look slightly behind the ball and swing all the way through. Lou, one more time. That's a nice golf shot. Before we ask our seniors to join us in the greenside bunker, let's review the fundamentals that are gonna enable us to make this an easy golf shot and a very easy transition from the grass to the bunker. Lou, if you'll stand over the shot, again, we wanna point out the open club face, the open stance, weight forward, and most importantly, the entry point is not the golf ball. Lou's going to look behind the golf ball and as he swings through towards his target, he's going to let his club enter behind the ball into the sand. Now, if we'll remember these fundamentals, it'll be very easy to take this skill stroke from the grass to the sand. Okay, Irene, let's see if we can take that pitch shot from the grass and use the same fundamentals and bring them into the sand trap, okay? okay. Now, we've been through the fundamentals, the one, two, three, four, the pre-swing, and we've talked about the in-swing. They don't change from pitch to bunker play. Now, the one thing that I noticed when you were pitching the ball was that your club face was not as open as it needs to be in the bunker. We've got to use the flange on the bottom of the club, and in order to do that, instead of, and if you'll go ahead and grip, Instead of just opening the club with your hands this way, what we really want to do is to open the club. There you go, loosen the hands, open the club face, and then grip. So that it, as you swing through, then the club face will remain open. Then you can use the fundamentals, because remember, we aim slightly left. Mm -hmm. We let the club do the work. Now, the other thing is, when we were in the grass, the big thing I see with the senior players, there's such a high confidence level there. And when we come into the sand, we begin to lose that. So we apply the same stroke 
remember that, and we'll make it easy on you here. We're not going to try to hit the ball. We're actually going to try to eliminate the sand. That's why I built a little circle around there. So let's see if we can get that club face open. There we go. Beautiful. And now we're going to make the same swing as you did in the grass. Big follow through for me. Good. That's a good shot. See if we can do that twice in a row. Now, I'm going to draw the circle. Now, your concentration is there. It's not on the ball. We're eliminating the sand, and that's going to make the ball go out on the green. Good follow through for me this time. Super. Now, there's a good bunker shot. See how much easier it is mm -hmm. when you let the club do the work? That's why we put the flange on the bottom of that club, OK? OK. okay. Now, let's return to our Seniors Golf Institute to look at swinging for distance. Now that we've mastered the skill strokes, let's get back to the basics of the golf swing. And earlier, we looked at the fundamentals of our direction swing. Now let's get to the fundamentals of the distance swing, commonly referred to as the full swing. But for the purposes of the senior golfer, let's talk in terms of a distance swing and break that down into pre-swing and in-swing fundamentals. The two pre-swing thoughts that we want to concentrate on is club selection and weight distribution. One of the pitfalls that we see seniors have is in the club selection, they never seem to take enough club to get the ball all the way back to the hole. I don't know if it's ego or if it's a little loss of strength, but nevertheless, the ball seems to come up short. Now, when we were concentrating on our direction swing, we knew that our path and our club face made the ball go straight. Now, in this pre-swing thought, we want to make sure we have enough golf club selected that we can take the club and miss hit it slightly and still get the ball up to the green. Always think that you're taking enough club to get the ball back in the center of the green. Now, in weight distribution, main concentration here is that earlier we were in a practice mode and we had the same club and we were hitting balls repetitiously from the same position. But when we get on the golf course and we begin to change our club selection, then we have to do one slightly different thing in our pre-swing and that is to add change of weight distribution. For example, if I have a seven iron in my hand, then we might assume that my weight distribution is 50-50 between my right and left feet. But as I select a longer golf club, one of the things that we want to do is to change your weight distribution back to your trail side, or in my case, my right side, as the club gets longer. Let's change to a three iron and see if the setup changes just slightly. As I take a three iron or a little longer golf club, you'll see that I'll begin to shift and put a little more weight on my right side. And as I get to the driver, we have maximum weight distribution on our right side. Good players commonly have as much as 70% back to their right side. Now, let's try to relate this to another sport. If we were playing baseball, we would set up in the batter's box with our hands back and our weight as far back on our right side as we could get it because we would want to stride into the ball. And the same thing would happen if we were playing tennis. The first thing your tennis coach is going to tell you is to get the racket back, step back so you can step forward. Unfortunately, as we get older and we become senior players, we don't have the strength to play from the neutral position that we once did. And if we start on the left side or in a neutral situation, and try to let our weight shift during our golf swing, we end up moving well back into the ball and we com complicate this whole process. We would rather start from our right side to eliminate one move. And if we can get our weight back, then swing our arms back, then we can go forward as we do in other sports and really uncomplicate this situation. Now, let's move forward to the in swing. Lou, you have some specific thoughts because of your experiences with seniors in the golf institute. So why don't you come on in here and share them with us? Yes, I do, Jay. My experience with the senior golfer and their aging process of lack of strength and lack of flexibility has been one in which they've lost distance through the years. And in order to get their distance back, what they've done is try to quicken their pace of the swing, and they have also increased the length of their backswing too far. Therefore, creating a swing that would be out of rhythm and out of balance and also it complicates their ability to hit the ball squarely. Now what we would like for them to do through their years is to maintain some fitness program to create some muscle tone in their golf swings. 
what we do in the Institute to overcome these tendencies is to focus on four key in-swing ingredients for clubhead speed. Jay, why don't you step back in here and explain those to us? Okay, Lou, the four areas that we want to concentrate on the in-swing, uh, one is pace, one's tension, one's length of view, as you've mentioned, and one is width, which is my favorite subject and I can't wait to get back to. But let's talk about pace first. We want, and Lou referred to, that people change their natural tendencies. We want people to swing within themselves, but what we find is a quickening of pace, and that takes them out of their normal character. We see some people that are hyper, we so see some people that kind of move in slow motion, but we see people when they get a golf club in their hand and the ball in front of them, they change their characteristics, and we have to be very careful of that. Whatever your normal pace, whether it be the way you get up in the morning or the way you go about uh, eating, that's the pace that we want you to assume in your golf role. We want you to maintain and play within yourself and keep a very simple, low profile with your pace. Now with tension, that's a little bit of a different matter. We've talked about it earlier, but now we're talking about in-swing tension. The biggest thing that we have a problem here is that we lose distance because we tighten our grips during the golf swing. And the key thing here is that if we can maintain the same constant grip pressure from the time we take the club away until we make contact and complete the full follow-through, then we have a better chance of letting the club do what it will do naturally. If we influence the club by tightening the grip, we're going to slow the club head speed down. We may hit the ball off center as we learned earlier, but what we will definitely do in every case is to lose distance. So we absolutely insist that we are aware during the in-swing process that you hold the club lightly and maintain that lightness throughout the swing. Our third influence in the club head speed is the length of our swing. And let me change clubs for that little demonstration. One of the things that Lou referred to in the length of the swing is that many of our seniors are made aware that their swings have shortened because of the loss of flexibility. And they put a premium on trying to extend and create a longer, greater backswing. And I just want to show you, this is actually uh, detrimental to what we try to do because it breaks up our natural rhythm and it forces us to do something that's very unnatural. And I want to show you that. If we attempt to take the club back to parallel, which is the common position that we all think we should be in, number one, we've created a certain amount of centrifugal force as we've taken the club away. Now, if our thoughts are on parallel, then the centrifugal force will always take the club way past parallel and we'll end up having to fix the backswing as we start our downswing. What we would rather you concentrate on is your normal pace, as we've said before, but to think in terms of a backswing position that is as high and as deep as my right shoulder. Deep meaning away from the golf ball and as high from the ground because then the centrifugal force of the golf swing will take this particular position and create something a little closer to par parallel, but it'll keep me from overswinging. Yes, club head speed can be influenced by the length of the swing, but more times than not, the length can decrease our club head speed. So we have to be very careful and make sure that we don't overswing, but that we keep this hands high and as deep position so that we can follow through towards our target and actually create more club head speed. Now, this brings us to our fourth influence, which is width. And to help me demonstrate that, I'm going to ask one of our senior students to come up here and help me. Ed, if you can come right up. Now, if you'll notice, now Ed, that's fantastic. Now, Ed, if you can go back and sit down for me. Well, to give it, let's give him a hand because he doesn't know what he just did. One of the things that we find with senior golfers is they won't do what Ed just did and help themselves create width in their golf swing. They won't use their lower body to support their upper body motion. Now let me demonstrate something to you. As I set up over the ball and get ready to make a swing, if I were to limit my lower body and not let my weight go from one foot to the other as Ed did when he walked up to us, my swing would look something like this. It would be very restrictive and if you can picture where my hands are in relation to the board behind me and then I'm going to do what Ed did. I'm going to let my weight shift from one leg to the other 
and now picture the position of the hands. You'll see that I've added maybe this much width to my swing. Now that's going to create much more centrif centrifugal force and add a lot more club head speed. Now, the reason most of the seniors don't do this, number one, there's a loss of confidence in their own skill abilities. Number two, they try so hard not to do things such as sway, we hear that term a whole lot, and what they end up doing is maintaining a position on their left side. They don't let their weight shift naturally. But if you'll remember when I referred to a couple of other sports, such as tennis, where we step away from and then back to our target, baseball or softball being the same thing, we firmly believe that you can enhance your club head speed and ultimately your distance if you let your lower body shift with your upper body. And we can say it just this simply, let your weight shift in the direction of your arms. If your arms are swinging away from your target, go ahead and let your weight shift in that direction and then let it shift back as we swing our hands and arms out to our target. Now, if we'll follow these four influences of the club head speed, then we are going to have much more success as seniors when we deal with our full swing principles. Now, what we'd like to do is to have our senior group join us, and Lou's going to come back in as their coach, and we're going to take them over and show you some online situations, and we're going to practice some of these fundamentals that we've worked on with our full swing. Sweep the tee right out of the ground. Hold it. Hold it. Finish. Hold that finish. Let's join Lou online with our senior students and just see how he's applying the fundamentals to their particular swings. Well, Irene, one of the common tendencies that you have is normally to aim to the right of the target and then swing back left. To help you feel that you're in alignment correctly, we put clubs down on the ground, what we call our H pattern here, to help you see your target line a little bit better, as well as getting your body in line with your target line. So let's set up to this ball real quickly. Very good. And then one other thing, feature I want to work with you on is your grip. Making sure that you hold it into the fingers more so than into the palm. I was noticing that you're getting your hands a little bit too much into the palm there, so we get a little bit more into the fingers there. There you go. That's a much better position right there. Maybe you've experienced the same problem as Irene. We see that as a common problem in our senior classes. We see a lot of people that aim right and form the habit of swinging left. Now you notice Lou didn't do anything drastic to change your alignment. He simply utilized the H pattern because he knows over a period of time and a lot of practice that that's going to become second nature to her and it's not going to be destructive to her regular swing right now. And what he'll do in time is to establish a relationship between the path and the alignment that's going to help her long term with her golf swing. With Ed, we can identify another common senior problem. What Lou is working with him right now on is in the full swing, Ed changes his pressure during his golf swing. And what he has done has altered his path, and it's evidenced by the shortness of his follow through. So let's watch what Lou does with him. Okay, Ed, now on this shot here is what I want you to do is to, when you follow through, I want you to get your hands all the way over your lead shoulder, and I want you to actually count to three before you bring those hands back down. Okay? okay. Let's go ahead and make a swing here. Hold them up there. One, two, three. Beautiful follow through. Now, don't be too concerned about where the ball goes for a while because of your habit of cutting it short through the pressure. Let's be light and even on the grip end of the club. Let's work on getting that good full follow through. Hold it. One, two, three. Beautiful. One, two, three. See, you caught yourself right there. Your habit was wanting to bring that club right back, so it tells us that there was a pressure change there. So we want to maintain a light, constant pressure in those hands and arms as you swing through. And one of the ways is maintaining that full follow-through finish. Hold it up there. One, two, three. It's very important that we review what Lou has done with Ed now, because this is a very common problem. And this full follow-through, what it actually does is to take the student's mind off the golf ball and really get it back onto target awareness because when he's concentrating on the follow-through and not on just ma making contact with the golf ball, then there's a certain sense of lightness 
and a little less pressure in the hands. But when he's in the ball striking mode, then everything happens and it stops. So it's absolutely important that we maintain this constant pressure throughout the golf swing and then create a full follow through to put our mind out on the target where it belongs and not on the golf ball. Just notice Lou working with one of the drills that we call the clock drill with his student. It's a great drill for the senior golfer because it promotes both the accuracy of the forward golf swing as well as some control and discipline in the backswing. Now what Lou's trying to establish with a player that has a tendency to have a little too long a backswing is to establish an 8, 9, and 10 o'clock position and then have him maintain a good forward swing in relationship to his target. So why don't we join in Lou? Okay, good Bob. Let's continue on with this little 8 o'clock swing exercise. Hit about three balls. Very good. Notice you got a pretty good little shot pattern working out there. One more. Then we're going to try to increase that length of swing to a nine o'clock swing. Very good. Now let's try to increase that again to a nine o'clock swing. And not trying to do anything different, but with that added little length and swing, it's going to get us just a little bit more distance out there. Very good. Hold it. And we notice that the more backswing that you take, the higher that follow through comes through. Doug, that's real good. From what we've seen before, where you used to hang left, not using and incorporating lower body motion, you are now understood about what the importance and the play is of getting the legs to work into the swing itself. I think you've done a tremendous job in that. Pleased to hear that. Beautiful. Now this is really rewarding what we're seeing Lou and Doug work on. Uh, knowing a little bit about Doug, Doug has been able to maintain his game from his 40s to his 50s to his 60s and now he's 70 years of age and he had begun to experience a little bit of problem with his weight distribution and really had quit using his legs. Lou's got him using his legs again and he has added a little more width to his swing and you can see that helps compensate for a very short backswing. Now Doug is an excellent senior player. He still maintains a five handicap and he should be able to extend his game into his early 70s by the addition of these fundamentals that he and Lou have worked very hard to achieve. Ed, if you don't mind, let's put some finishing touches on this full swing session, okay? okay. Let me get in here and help you if I can. If you'll stand right behind me. I've noticed a couple of things from behind you. Number one, you've been fading the ball a little bit, which is a senior tendency, and I understand that. The second thing is that you've got a little bit of an up and down motion in our golf swing, and we've talked about it before, but I want to give you a little tip here and maybe help you get away from that. First thing is, as all of us age, we can't do the things that we used to do, so keep that in mind, and that's not an offensive statement. What I want you to do is to try to think about playing golf around your body a little more than you have in the past, not so much up and down. Now, I know from talking to you that you are a racket player, a tennis player, so you're very familiar with the racket stroke. Now, if matter of fact, why don't we do a forehand together? I want you to imitate what you used to do here. Yeah, we swing our arm away from, back to the target, but more importantly, if we're gonna put a little top spin on this, there we go. We stroke through to our target. Now, that's not unlike what I want you to try and golf. We're going to do this exercise where we hold the club about 18 inches off the ground. We're going to let our hands and arms swing around our body. And as we go back towards the target with our path, I want you to feel that top spin motion you used to feel when you played tennis. We're going to release right towards our target. And let me hit one shot for you. And I'm going to do it real easy. And you can see how that type of exercise and that practice is going to promote a little bit of a draw. Why don't we get you in here and let's see if you can execute that for me. You want me? 
I'll take the one practice stroke there, about 18 inches. There, great. Now I'll release that tennis shot. There you go. Super. Now let's see if we can get the ball in the way of that. That's fantastic. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Now, let's join a foursome from our senior institute as they finish a round of golf. Good shot, good shot, Irene. Target awareness. Okay.
See how much fun senior golf can be? Now remember, simple mental preparation, proper practice, and understanding our limitations can make this golf game real fun and a lot more simple than we've thought in the past.